Welcome to another Gods Unchained video, this time about the new Winter Wonderland set, this time with two cameras, so I hope you appreciate the new production value, hey? Let's just get into it. For a limited time only, the Winter Wonderland set will be available from the holidays to spread some cheer until the new year. It's a small set of 20 cards only, cool, which will be available in the store, earned through weekend ranked, or by participating in all the festivities planned for the community. So let's see what these festivities are about. Interesting. New design and distribution. So this is a very cool thing that they have changed compared to the Light's Verdict, because in the Light's Verdict you would get the cards along with the Mortal Judgment packs, so that meant you had to buy Mortal Judgment packs, which meant that the Mortal Judgment cards lost a lot of value. We had positive responses to many aspects of the Light's Verdict, but the attachment to Mortal Judgment meant it was harder to find the cards from the Light's Verdict set, and it also meant that the Mortal Judgment cards depreciated a lot in value. But it will not happen this time, because you will receive the packs in a different way. So we got the two packs here, Booster and Shiny. You can see a booster pack costs $19.99, contains three rare, epic or legendary Winter Wonderland cards. Then you can also pay $100 to get a shiny pack. I'm not gonna do that, I don't know who's gonna do that. You can see the drop rates here for each individual card. We can see that the drop rate is the same among legendary cards. But when it comes to epic cards, it's quite clear that some cards are rarer than others. and the rarer cards are probably also better. And it's the same thing among the rare cards. Then we got something very interesting. Trinket rewards. And there's two ways that you can get a trinket. First we got the frozen vibrant fruit trinket. And you get that for minting your first legendary Winter Wonderlands card. Of gold or diamond quality. And you can get it either through purchasing packs or getting them through rewards. So if you open a legendary card in a pack you get this trinket. Or if you fuse Winter Wonderland's cards, so since it's also gold quality, it would mean that you would just have to buy five Winter Wonderland shadow cards of the same copy, and then you can fuse that into a gold one, and then you should get this trinket. The other trinket is the unexpected gift. The first 600 unique players who trade legendary Winter Wonderland's cards on any immutable X-powered marketplace will receive this trinket. This promotion will run from December 24th to blah blah blah. So I think to get this trinket you would have to be pretty quick. I don't know if it's considered cheating if you sell a card to one of your friends and then they trade it back to you. I don't know whether you're allowed to do that or not. This is probably meant for the people who are buying packs and lucky to get a legendary card or the ones who buy one early. But I don't know about buying the legendary cards early because the price is probably gonna be pretty high in the start, right? Free to play Winter Wonderlands access. And this is where it's also gonna be different from Light's Verdict because in Light's Verdict, you got the cards along with the Mortal Judgment packs, but here you actually just win Winter Wonderland's packs. The rewards that you normally receive for weekend rank will still be Mortal Judgment packs, but players who meet certain requirements will also receive bonus Winter Wonderland's booster packs delivered to them separately. So the first requirement is players who earn at least one legendary Mortal Judgment pack will receive three Winter Wonderland's booster packs. Players who don't meet the above criteria but earn at least one epic mortal judgment pack will receive one winter wonderlands booster pack so it is quite achievable with the with the epic mortal judgment packs however the legendary is quite difficult these rewards will be calculated separately from normal weekend ranked rewards so they may be delivered up to a month later that's obviously a shame because that could tank the price for quite a lot of the cards but it's also nice that some of the cards will maybe hold their value much better because people gaining these cards from weekend ranked won't be flooding the market with them. Holiday rewards. As a special treat and to celebrate the end of the year, we will be providing an additional way to require Winter Wonderlands packs as rewards while playing Gods Unchained. Each day, 1000 players who complete all 10 of their daily play and earn games will have a random chance to receive a bonus Winter Wonderlands booster pack. This will be available each day between blah 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 blah. Alright, that's very very cool because that actually means that Gods Unchained gives back to the players who are just playing and likes playing the game. You don't have to be in Mythic ranked or in Diamond ranked to get the cool packs. 
it's just about luck and if you play your 10 games you have a chance of earning something so that's very very cool i definitely like those kind of additions to this mini set the balance and phase is just like the other set as with each of our releases winter wonderlands will be subject to a life balance and period known as the balance and phase post release for six weeks now it's finally time to have a look at the actual cards 20 of them Let's start with the Rain Napper. A raw obliterate a creature with mana cost 3 or less. After life, summon a base copy of that creature for its controller. So it's a bit like the Blades of White Plane, it's just one mana cost cheaper. And it's also 4 strength, so the Blades can actually not take this card out. Also, it obliterates the creature, but then the creature comes back in a base copy. So it can be very cool to buffed creatures. It will be very cool against Dagon. It will be very nice against a buffed up Pyramid Warden. Another nerf to the Pyramid Warden. So I think this card has a lot of potential. Then we got the Avalanche Watcher. Backline, raw, expend all of your available mana. This creature gains one plus one for each mana expended. So it's a magic card. And it will just be one of these very annoying magic cards, kind of like the Layhard Hatchling with a zero mana. So it will be very cheap to play. But also this card is countered by the Rain Napper. And actually it's not countered by the Blaze of White Plane. So that's quite interesting. Then we got the first legendary card of Feo in Wonderlands. Deadly, hidden for one turn. After your opponent plays a creature, attack it. Afterlife, shuffle this creature into your deck again. So an annoying card that you just can get over and over again. But the opponent has the control of what creature he wants to die. Now it does say after your opponent plays a creature. So I don't know if you summon a confused badger if it would kill that or you have to play a card. If you have to play a card, it would make this card a lot stronger. Then we got the Curious Wonder Cats. At the end of your turn, remove 3 durability from each relic. I don't know, it's not really a card that I think is that interesting. Thought Heart, obliterate your opponent's void. For each creature obliterate, heal your god for one. Very OP card, especially against the Nubian. This is just a very good card. I definitely need this card. I'm definitely gonna buy this card. This is very much a need to have. Right now, I think... You got the Rain Napper is definitely a need to have card. Avalanche Watcher, if you're playing Magic, need to have. This one is need to have as well, especially because it's rare. So it shouldn't be that expensive in the start. Then we got Frozen Rest. Pick one, destroy all your opponent's relic or target two creatures. They go to sleep. I don't know. I don't think it doesn't seem that OP or like a card that's going to be in the meta. You never know. Slay Master Velka. 5 mana, war card, overkill, raw. If you have fewer than 2 cards in hand, gain blitz. This reminds me a lot of the Orcish Elite. This just has overkill instead of twin strike and you only get the blitz if you have fewer than 2 cards in your hand. It does have more strength and the same health. But it's inter is this better? Is it that much better than the Orcish Elite? Would you just put it in your deck to have three kind of Orcish Elite like the cards? It is a very cool card. Mm, yeah, I, I, I think it could be viable. Especially if you got your opponent having a lot of low health creatures, right? Spirit Storm. Trigger the afterlife of each friendly creature. It's going to be quite sick for death if you're... <laughs> Playing death, I would definitely get two copies of this card. It's a must-have. Mary Catmos, frontline, pick one. Pull a creature from the board to the top of its controller's deck or give plus two, plus two to the chosen one. I guess it would be quite nice to gain board control and some light decks really need early board control. So it could be good, could be viable. Guiding light, draw the chosen one from your deck also give it plus three, plus three, and protect it. Well, that, that seems a bit OP. Yeah, I definitely, definitely buy this card. No matter, I'm, I'm not even uh, that much of a light player, but I definitely want to get two copies of this card, no matter what. Fur Tree's Fury. Deal one damage to the weakest enemy creature. If there are no enemy creatures, summon a 1-1 one, one Frosty Fruit. Repeat four more times. A Frosty Fruit. What is a frosty fruit? 
it was a trinket, but what is an actual frosty fruit? The strength of this card very much depends on what a frosty fruit is. It is quite a lot of mana. You do fill the board unless you're killing an enemy, so it could also be used to gain board control, especially against a very wide board. So, interesting card. I do play nature a lot, so I'm definitely gonna buy it. Let's see how good it is. Hopefully it could be very nice, say. Unexpected gift. Heal each creature for three. Afterlife, shuffle, shuffle a base copy of this creature into your opponent's deck. So yeah, I don't know what to say about this card. It kind of plays into the heal meta that we're probably gonna see with this new set. It does seem like it could be a meta where you gain a lot of health and you, as a nature player and you want to heal yourself. I don't know. Frost Queen Neferu. Each turn after the first time your opponent draws a card, plays a card, uses their god power and attacks with the relic, their god takes two damage. So this is definitely a card you need to have if you're playing Anubian. However, I don't know whether Anubian is going to be that viable after the nerf with the new Thought Heart uh, light card. I think that could nerf Anubians a lot, but if you're playing Anubian, I think you you should definitely get this card because it could just win you the game, right? Next card, take the reins. Gain control of the strongest enemy creature with less strength than the strongest friendly creature until the end of turn. Empower 4. Gain control of any enemy creature until the end of the turn instead. Yeah, if you're playing Aggro War, I could see that this would be quite interesting. If you're facing a front line, or if you just need the last bit of health on your opponent's guard, this could be a viable card. Could give you board control if you use it to kill your an, another one of your opponent's creatures. Yeah, could be viable. I don't know though. The next card, Candy Cane. It's a relic. After you play a spell, shuffle a candy link into your opponent's deck and remove one durability from this relic. So again, what is a candy link? It seems like it could be very annoying, especially since a lot of deception decks just need to get to the wither fingers and then it's GG. So it could be a very interesting card. Definitely gonna buy two of them, I think. And we got Snow Shaper Palace, a raw and ability. Transform a creature into a zero one statue with canned attack. So it's a six mana and it's three three. So quite an annoying raw. It's gonna be annoying when you play against magic if you're playing like just a default magic. It's a nice card, I think. I'd buy it. It's not horribly OP though, I don't think so. Rainkeeper Selena. After this creature attacks, summon a base copy of a random friendly wild creature with mana cost 3 or less. So I would guess that the creature would have to be on board to copy something, right? But that would also mean that you could copy a Dagon. Also raw summon 2-2-2 two, two, two rain badges with blitz. So basically you're getting, for 6 mana you're getting a 7-7 seven, seven if you take account for the badges as well. And you can also get a copy of another friendly wild creature. So I think there's a lot of potential for this card to be cool. I like some more blitz as well because it's so important for nature to win board. So definitely an interesting card. Woodcutter Imp. God blitz for only two mana. After this creature attacks, your god takes damage equal to the damage dealt. Very cool war card. It's a must have, I think you need this. It has god blitz. So if you're playing aggro war especially, this could be the card that wins you the game. It's ki it kind of reminds me a bit of the underbrush boar in the nature realm. But yeah, I just I just think it's a must-have card. And I'm gonna buy it even though I don't play war that much. Then we got the palace's wonder wagon. Frontline. <laughs> cool. A frontline magic creature for only four mana. Alright, you need this if you're playing magic, I think. After a spell is cast, swap this creature's strength and health. So structures they they can't attack, right? So that's, that's going to be make it a bit more nice to play against, but I think I think this card is going to be very annoying to play against when you play against Magic. But also nice to see Magic get some more cards to throw out onto the board instead of just spells, right? Yeah, I think you should definitely get this card if you're playing Magic. Maybe just get it anyway because it's a rare, so it shouldn't be that expensive, right? Very interesting card. Also, the mechanic with its switching health and strength, right? Cool card. Winter's Bounty. The last card of the set. And this card could change the meta a lot. 
at least the nature meta, right? And that could just change the whole meta. But set your god's maximum health to 40, heal your god for 20. That definitely make control decks more viable in my opinion. It's very interesting whether this could change the meta. I think, especially as a nature player myself, I need to get two of this card. You'd probably just use one right, but I think it's a quite interesting card. Also because there are a lot of nature cards that heal you up. Definitely a must have if you are a nature player. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. If you liked the video, please like it. Subscribe if you want to see more content from me. I'm gonna try to be more consistent with these uploads. It's not easy, but I really want to do it. And we also see the production value is being stepped up. So you know, some things are happening, right? But yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now, guys.